Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 4th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary, Brad is looking at a recent copy of the Sea Loader malware that was actually peddled using Polish language malicious spam messages. Now, overall, nothing really all too special here. It's an Excel spreadsheet with a macro that will then download the cloader.dll. One thing of note here is that all the traffic is HTTPS. So if you don't uh, inspect HTTPS traffic, you're pretty blind here. On the other hand, once you do inspect HTTPS, there are Couple sort of telltale signs here, like odd user agent headers and the like, that should make it pretty straightforward uh, to actually detect uh, this kind of malware. If you don't have TLS inspection, you're pretty much left uh, with uh, DNS lookups. And there are some sort of interesting uh, host names here. Not sure how well they would sort of pop up in a busy network. Uh, they are using the .at uh, top level domain. Uh, I believe that's uh, Austria uh, that uh, does use .at. So not a super common top level domain, but uh, nothing like you know, the dot xyz or dot top top level domains that are commonly used by malware another giveaway here of course is also that the binary is directly downloaded so you'll get your typical windows executable header that's also pretty easy to pick up on for any kind of intrusion detection system and Cisco fixed an interesting flaw in a number of its routers and switches affecting the IP in IP protocol. It's a little bit of a weird protocol where we are really just sending an IP packet inside another IP packet. So you have uh, two IP headers following each other, almost a little bit like a shortcut to GRE, which you could also use here. The protocol number in the first IP header would just be four, indicating that the next header is an IPv4 header. And yeah, of course, IPv6 over IPv4 does not use six. That would be TCP. But either way, the problem here is that if a vulnerable Cisco device does receive a packet with two IP headers like this, it will just remove the first IP header and then happily route the embedded IP packet without any restrictions that would have been exposed by any kind of firewalls. So, uh, I would compare this vulnerability to something similar to source routing as far as the impact goes, but again, can be used uh, to bypass firewall rules, can be used uh, for denial of service attacks, and uh, should be pretty simple to pull off. So Cisco did release updates for this vulnerability. The CVE number for this one is 2020-10136. And yes, I should note that, of course, there are legitimate reasons to use IP in IP. So it's not that all IP in IP traffic is necessarily malicious. And Cisco released today details regarding two Zoom vulnerabilities that were fixed in recent releases. Cisco tested version 4.6.10 up to 4612 may be vulnerable to some of these issues, but if you are running the current version, which I believe is 503 right now, you should be safe. The vulnerabilities themselves are uh, quite serious. First one is an arbitrary file write. So an attacker could write arbitrary files to a system using the Giphy uh, chat feature. The second one is actually kind of interesting uh, because it's an arbitrary code execution vulnerability, which is bad. And it's in the code snippet feature. Now, Zoom has the ability to essentially, I can send you a code snippet, but really all it does, it sort of folk, uh, formats it uh, like uh, code is usually formatted with a fixed size font and the like. But apparently there is a vulnerability here that can be accessed 
exploited for arbitrary code execution. But I don't believe it's where the script that you're sending is directly uh, exploitable. Either way, Cisco has released additional details, including sort of proof of concept code in order uh, to uh, verify the vulnerability. And again, uh, recent versions of Zoom are not affected. And Firefox made news and somewhat controversial in recent months about enabling DNS over HTTPS by default. Apparently, that uh, experiment didn't go over too well uh, with the DNS over HTTPS providers. And today, Firefox released version 77.0.1 that will disable the automatic selection of DNS over HTTPS as it apparently caused some denial of service conditions and as they're saying in their release notes to enable wider deployment in a more controlled way. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.